This is a 1985 Toyota Hilux Surf. It's uh, equipped with a 2.4 liter turbo diesel engine. It's a five speed manual. It's a four wheel drive, of course. And it's a very early Hilux Surf. Uh, the Hilux Surf is just the Japanese market name for the Toyota 4Runner. In the early 4Runners, uh, 4Runner actually came first. So how this all started out was Toyota either commissioned or gave permission to Winnebago to perform conversions called Trekkers, with Ks, conversions on the Toyota pickup trucks. Um, and then what they would do is they would put a semi-permanent fiberglass topper thing on it and they would cut out the rear door of the, or the rear panel of the pickup truck, put in rear seats, carpet it. Um, and that was done as a market test for Toyota to see if something like this, which was meant to compete with the old style um, Ford Broncos and Chevy Blazers where you could take the top off and like it was kind of a convertible sort of thing. Targeted specifically for that, um, but the Winnebago Trekkers were done as a market test to see if a product like that was viable. Toyota decided it was, and then the 4Runner actually came first before the Surf by either a few months or like six months or something like that. Uh, so much so that this is a, like I said earlier, is a very early Hilux Surf uh, model 907 actually. But when they went to sell these in Japan, all the promotional material and everything says things like American Spirit and American four-wheel drive style and stuff like that, um, which is kind of neat. Um, and another thing that's kind of neat about this specific surf is the promotional brochures and material used in 1985 to sell these. This was one of the, this style anyway, with the graphics and this color and all the options, uh, was one of them that was in the promotional material for it. Um, this one is missing the front winch that that one has on it, but otherwise it's identical. Which is kind of neat. And there's another yellow one with a sunroof and like a butterscotch banana cream interior that looks excellent, but well, you take what you can get. Uh, I purchased this uh, from auction in Japan and imported it. So now it wears a full United States legality, uh, it has a clean Florida title, it's in my name. Um, and it needs absolutely nothing except some cosmetic stuff, if it's important to you, um, because it's not perfect. But it is 100% original. Um, it's never been restored. It's never been overhauled or repainted or had any sort of major work at all. Uh, it's just been lovingly maintained. Um, so yeah, with that being said, early forerunners and early surfs are really just... A Toyota pickup truck with what Winnebago did which is they cut this back panel off and then this is the pickup truck bed this is a fiberglass plastic topper that sits on top you even get the tailgate the tailgate's a little different because it has a glass pane that rolls down into it and then this folds down like normal and we'll go through that when I'm walking around or as we get into it uh, so this is technically a convertible ish sort of thing uh, the driver and passenger don't get any topless action, but this whole rear can come off. It's kind of a pain. It's not something you do before you go. It's not like a foldable convertible top where you can do it before you're out on the town for the day. It's more like a seasonal thing to where you take it off at the beginning of season and then you put it back on a couple months later. Uh, it's easily a two person job, if not three or four. Because this is an early surf, there's a certain visual cues to it. I mean, US market forerunners, and this is a forerunner, so I might interchange the name, so I apologize about that. Uh, only the Japanese market got the fender mirrors, and this is on a lot of early 80s, late 70s type uh, Japanese cars, and the whole reason for it is you have the mirrors that are more inboard, so you can get through thinner streets and more narrow passages. Later, I guess they just gave up and they just have normal mirrors, mirrors that you can just fold. But being this is a very early one, it does have that, and it's a very cool visual flare bit. Uh, the other thing that outs this as an early one is the sticker package, which seems to only be, and I'm not an expert, this is just as I'm getting into this. This specific sticker package is a very early sticker package. There's ones that look similar to that that are like a, kind of like a Nike swoosh sort of to where it goes back and then it goes up. Just as cool. Um, I've had some people from Australia say something about the fenders being a little different. I don't know if that's true or not. The grill here, instead of being 
a four section with a cross in the middle, you have three only on very early, I don't know about forerunners, but absolutely surfs. Uh, like I said, it's all original, original wheels, including the chrome covers around the hubs and the rear chrome center caps for the rear wheels. Um, everything is functional. And since we're back here, start talking about the imperfections. So this is the dent. And based on how the rear is here, it looks like it was opened on something because there isn't any damage anywhere else to somehow get you know, something to hit with the tailgate up. I don't know, actually, but um, it looks worse than it is. It's just visual. The glass is intact, and the roll-down mechanism works, and the tailgate comes down just fine, and the badges are there, and there's even just only a little bit of paint, <coughs> excuse me, only a little bit of paint that's missing. Um, and then the tailgate's the worst part about it. And then right here, I don't know if it'll show up, but there's a dent and they covered it with a bumper sticker and it was on when I got it and it was actually a Mitsubishi Rally Art sticker, which, uh, you know, it's not Toyota, so that's gone. Uh, I did leave this sticker though, which from what I can tell is a three hour radio show that used to run and might still run uh, in Japan. It's just super neat to leave little embellishments like that. I kind of like to. And the next owner can decide what to do with it. But while I have it, I like to play an homage to the people who had it before. Uh, other imperfections is, it looks like they tried to repaint this gold bit that had faded. And you can see the sticker's kind of chipped. Eh, it's not exact, but it's fine. Have a slight little bubble here. Uh, there's no rust anywhere else on it as far as like corrosion or any the underneath is completely spotless and I'll put um, a link to the gallery of pictures in the description so you guys can check it out if you'd like uh, another part where the sticker is kind of chewed up which makes sense because this is an 85 and this is where the driver gets in and out and handles and everything some more chewed up bits here uh, the mirrors and all like the plastic corners and everything are flawless the rear lip down here is in extremely good shape. There's a small ding over there. The hood's in good shape. Um, there isn't any chips on the front, which is pretty excellent. The grill is in good shape. The front chrome bumper is in good shape with the exception of this little bit here. Uh, the wheels are in good shape. Well, excellent shape actually. Um, I have a neighbor of mine who talks about factory chrome always being way better than aftermarket chrome, and it, the chrome on these wheels is super thick. Uh, some more little dings here, not dings, um, sticker missing. And then right here it looks like they like either reapplied or just painted it red. Some more nicks, um, and then there's so like this, so this is a little like rust spot. It doesn't go through. It's not, it, it's not like rust through at all. It's just like a surface little pocket. And then some other scratches here. And we're missing the plastic cover that goes here to hide that bolt hole. It's, we have it on the other side, so I'll show you. That's what you're supposed to have. And then another sort of nick here. Um, and one more. A couple more. Here's another paint missing sort of bit. And this trim stuff. So these are the rain rails underneath. And then there's this. It looks like it's um, kind of faded, but it was originally supposed to be chrome with like a plastic wrapped around it. It's, the whole thing is plastic. And it just sits on top of the rain rails. So the rails underneath are just fine. This is just a visual thing. And then this one's in cracked. And so it's kind of peeling up, but get replacements for those. And the uh, Hilux Surf badges, normally these would say Forerunner on a US market. The uh, like inlaid metal foil is kind of missing on a little bit of it. And the other one's just, just the same. However, they, applied this just 
doesn't really survive. Uh, so that's it for the exterior, and as you can tell, it's it's gorgeous. And uh, at least here in the U.S., 80s trucks, especially, um, and stuff like we didn't get like diesels. I've talked about that before in other videos, get a ton of attention. So this, so far, is the most desirable to other people sort of vehicle because it's an 80s Toyota truck. It's got these little embellishments. It's diesel. It's in excellent shape. It has air conditioning. Uh, it's just really awesome and it's all original. The only thing that has been changed is the head unit for the stereo, but they even went through the effort of not cutting the wiring harness, which is super surprising. Um, I've been daily driving this for the past month and I'd like to keep it because we'll look at it, except it's too nice and it's worth too much and somebody else out there is going to appreciate it more than me and like I feel bad if I keep it. So it'll probably be going up for sale at some point. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's real damn pretty and we haven't even gotten inside yet. So let's start on the passenger side. So the thing about Forerunners and by extension surfs is they're just a Hilux pickup truck or in the US just a Toyota truck or Toyota pickup maybe anyway from the basically the dashboard and this front door here forward identical there is nothing different about this uh, except Japan the surfs never the Hilux surfs never got solid axles all the way through so this is an independent front suspension so you have the differential and you do little things and they stick out. Um, there's a foreigner guy I was talking to that was kind of surprised that the Japanese market never got solid axles in the front, but this does not. It's a on-road um, independent front suspension, solid in the rear though with leaves. Anyway, uh, the front here is identical to any 80s Toyota pickup truck of this generation. Uh, fourth or fifth generation Toyota pickup trucks. So that's all the same. It's back here where things start to get different. So, uh, well, the biggest thing is this metal piece is cut and then you have this topper set on top, but it's still fundamentally a pickup truck. And so you only get two doors, kind of inconvenient, but you'll notice two door handles on this passenger side door. It's only on this side of the door um, and I'll demonstrate why that is, you can probably figure it out uh, when we get to the back. So anyway, here's the interior. Um, as you can see, the seats, the seats are in very good shape, condition. Um, just a crack in the vinyl here, but otherwise no tears. It's not sunk. It's clean, well-maintained. Step in the side here. So I have no way of proving or knowing this but this certainly feels like a one owner car or and usually i know that like it'll be sold as and then it'll come with like the manuals and stuff so i didn't get the manuals with this and i didn't get any maintenance history outside of stickers and things that are applied to it from when the oil changes were done and the timing belt and all that sort of stuff um but the way it's worn leads me to believe that it was owned by one person for a long time uh you'll notice this little flower hook thing here it's got this little silver embossed flower when we took delivery of this it was covered in lace seat covers on the front and rear passenger or on the front and passenger sorry driver's side and passenger side seats uh, they had a little lace thing the headrests had a floral pattern you know flowers covering that the rear had floral patterns on the headrests and it had a floral pattern curtains installed all the way around so I don't know for sure, of course, and I'm stereotyping here, but it, this really feels like that it was owned by an older woman for a long time. And the other things about that is uh, it came with a like kind of like a Japanese version of Pure Moods tape in the tape adapter here. This stereo folds down and there's a tape thing back. I don't know if it'll do it without power. Nope. Um, and then we found like a bunch of old lady candy or stuff that I would say is an old lady candy, you know, like where there's original type hard candies and little stuff like that. Um, and like way expired dried ginger and things. And uh, hair clips and like hair ties and like, you know, long haired feminine-ish type stuff. 
So I know that, again, it's stereotyping, but it certainly feels like that. And because it's all original and because it hasn't been abused at all, it just makes me think of at least somebody older owned it for a long time. Uh, and like I said, when we were outside, this is the only thing that's changed, but they didn't cut the head unit because these are doubled in systems when you first get them, usually with the radio and the tape player on the bottom. Um, I don't know if you'll see it from back here, but this is the wiring harness. So that's kind of kind of really great, actually, that they didn't cut it. And there's no speakers in here, so there's places for the speakers, but there isn't any speakers in the front. And in the rear, there's perforated holes where they can go. No speakers in there. So this is connected to two loose like speaker pods that are underneath the seats. Um, you can just take them out. That's what this wire down here is for. Um... So yeah, this is a passenger side, and you, well, if you've been in a first-gen 4Runner or an early Toyota truck, then you know how this sits. Uh, it feels like you're sitting in a car. You're like in a reclined sort of position, and it's pretty comfortable. But it's different as opposed to the like rigid bench seat. We have a uh, Land Cruiser Prado that we're also driving, and that's much more masculine type, big feeling, even though it's just taller. But this is definitely a designed for street, urban type driving. It's very comfortable, it's very smooth. It's not very fast, but it's quick enough to keep up with traffic just fine. And you can go 70, 75 on the highway all day if you'd like. Uh, as far as passenger specific things, there really isn't anything to say about it. Um, it's, it's nice, you know, it's just a car. So let's go to the driver's side. Actually, here, what we'll do here, we'll talk about the passenger side. Um, and to go to the quality, or the quality, uh, how it's maintained, like you can just see, it's, it's perfect. And the door panel here, it's not worn. You have a little bit of a chalkiness on the handle, but that's unavoidable because it's just how the plastic is. But no issues at all on anything. And, uh, these side skirt um, sidestep things are options that were available from Toyota, so these are factory. Uh, anyway, for this rear handle, so there is back seats, and that's kind of a whole thing about this is, oh, it's, you know, take more people with you. But you only have two doors because they based it on the pickup truck. So how do you get in? Uh, you come in. Sometimes it doesn't check. There's the speaker pod. So anyway, the passenger seat only does this, where you flip it and then the whole thing slides forward. Anybody that's ever driven an 80s or 90s car with two doors recognizes that. So you get in, um, and before we sit down, the rear seat in perfect shape, and the seat belts and everything back here works, and oh, this fell off. Uh, so yeah, and then you get in, and then close this. So then you're sitting back here. And uh, it's, it's pretty comfortable. I mean, you get enough room. There's plenty of room for four people to sit, including with the driver's seat and a typical size driver. Uh, you get windows back here. All the air conditioning and everything is up front, so that's kind of a bummer, but it flows plenty just back here. Uh, we do have a rear seat option, or a rear heater option that's in the center console here, um, and it does work. So, you know, if you're cold back here, you can just... Flip this on, turn the fan on, and there you go. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to get out, see this little foot pad down here? Click that, and then now the mystery of the second door handle is revealed because it's for the rear passengers if there's no front passenger to let themselves out. Ta-da. Um, another thing to point out is that it does come with the original floor mats. Uh, the rear one here doesn't say Hilux, but it does say Toyota. And as you might have seen, when we're sitting here, these are the original floor mats. And when we got this, on top of the floral, there's the underneath the carpet. On top of the floral seat flowery patterns and stuff, uh, they had mats on top of these mats. So they had two layers of floor mats. Go to the passenger side. Uh, apologize, I'm trying to 
make sure that I still got the camera on because I hit it. So this is the driver's side. Uh, same thing. Door is perfect and the glass is all good too. It's just hot. All the original glass too. None of it's been replaced. The rubber and everything, of course, is in perfect shape. It doesn't, rain doesn't seep in, it doesn't leak, it doesn't do any of that sort of stuff. Um, and of course, I washed and waxed it and trim restored the plastic and metal polished the wheels and stuff. Just standard stuff, you know? Um, so yeah, door is good. And then likewise over here, you have the original Hilux floor mats. Um, and the original pedals and everything. And the seat. Also in super excellent shape. Uh, this is kind of pushed over from just constantly coming in and out, but it's not a big deal at all. And because you sit in this, like you sit in a car, um, it is kind of a thing to get in because you have to slide in because it's it feels low even though you sit high. Um, so yeah, and uh, like I said, I'm not an expert, but I'm pretty sure the steering wheel is different than most first gens. Um, and I think it was about the time when they changed to a quad cross grill. The steering wheel got this like more puffy thing on it. Um, and I don't know if any other sort of interior things changed, but it's just something I've noticed. But again, I'm not an expert. So uh, I don't know if you can see this, but it currently has 229,070 kilometers on it which is like what 160,000 miles so nothing as far as reliability or the engine or the drivetrain or any of that sort of stuff but pretty high considering how nice of condition it is in uh there's certain diesel things you have a they don't call it a choke but a like a, a throttle thing so if it's cold out you can twist this little knob down here and it'll raise the engine rpm for you uh, it does have an HKS turbo timer. I don't know if you can see that mounted underneath the steering wheel. And for those of you that don't know, the turbo timer is meant specifically to keep the truck running or keep the car running if it's attached to it on anything with the turbo charger. Because if you're out driving around and the hot oil's in the turbo and you just shut the engine off, that hot turbo, the hot oil sits in the turbo. And so what a turbo timer does is you set it, this specific one goes for one, three, or five minutes. And then once that's on, if you're out driving around and then you shut the ignition off and you take your key out, keep it in neutral, uh, the engine keeps running. And the whole point of that is to keep the drip, drop the temperature down to idle and so cool oil goes and circulates through the turbocharger so when it does stop, it's not scalding hot oil that's in the turbo and instead it's normal expecting oil temperature. And the purpose behind that is to maintain the life of the turbo and prolong its longevity. Uh, so there you go, that's turbo timer. That's why Japan loves them so much. Uh, it's a five-speed manual, and the transmission shifts perfectly. Clutch is great. It's been lovingly maintained. Uh, the original shift knob up here, again with the Hilux badges on the outside. It seems like the, just the metal foil on the inside just gives up the ghost after a while. Um, it's four-wheel drive, and it does function just per perfectly. Uh, you got, you know, standard high H2, high 2, which is what you normally drive down, high 4, and then neutral, and then low 4, and the auto locking hubs and everything works. Get this front little pot up here. I do know that some of the very early US market 4Runners had this as well. Um, it just shows you your altimeter, and I'm in Florida, so it'll be zero all the time. Um, and then your side to side and front to back angle of approach does have air conditioning as well, which does work. Um, it does have a slight issue because the windows aren't tinted in here. So it has to work extra hard to work against summer Florida heat, but it does its job. Uh, the little center console pod down here, uh, you have your window up and down to control the rear window and the tailgate, window lock, and then your rear, wipe, rear wiper, flip it on to turn the wiper on, press this to squirt the fluid and the rear wiper is a little different because it doesn't rest on the glass at all times because the glass has to come down so the wiper when you turn it on there's this clunk as it pops out and then it'll go down and then if you shut it off it stops again at the top it makes another clunk as it reseats itself into the holder back there 
Um, this aftermarket stereo is actually kind of cool. Um, it doesn't really match the aesthetic in here, but it does function pretty well. Um, I don't have CDs anymore, but I do have a tape adapter that I connect my phone to, and that works just fine. Um, it looks like a very high quality early 2000s tape adapter head unit thing. So. Uh, it's never been smoked in, as you can see. I don't know cigarette burns and no smoke smell at all. An ashtray we used to keep garbage on or in. Uh, it has a clock. It's just a green LED clock, so that's cool. Um, the center thing here. Oh, and as far as the interior goes, so I'm sure you've seen it. The shift boots here are the leather. Toyota calls it leather, so it must be just be leather match, like just real terrible quality stuff. Uh, has come off, so now it's kind of like sticky fabric. It's not torn or ripped or anything. Um, and then the center console lid here, and as any Forerunner or Hilux Surf owner knows, that this thing always falls apart. So it's still intact. Uh, we still have the original material underneath, but this is a sweatshirt of uh, my wife that we just cut up that she wasn't wearing anymore. And we just screwed it into the base here to cover the loose foam because it's worn where your elbow sits. Uh, and I do have an OEM replacement for this uh, in the gray and then the black shift boot here. On the way from Japan that sh I should get within the next month or so, it takes a long time uh, for bespoke parts like this. So then the interior will be perfect. Um, so yeah. And let's explore the back. So because this is essentially a pickup truck with glass here, there's two ways to get in back here. Um, so there's no handle. There's no exterior handle to open the door or do any of that sort of stuff. And because the glass sits up in the topper back here, you have to lower it before you drop the tailgate. So you can either do it inside, which you press the button and it'll lower it all the way down, or you use your key. Um, and another thing about this is it came with the original keys. So this is one of the original keys, and then there's another one, and then one aftermarket one. So anyway, stick the key in, twist it, lowers the window, take the key out, and then here's the lock, and here's the handle. And you drop it down. And then likewise when you want to close it. And then it'll automatically lock. So this is the lock right here. And that's how you raise it. And you can drive around with it down. Um, you do get a dash warning light. If this isn't locked, it'll say tailgate. It's, it's just this though. The window has no sensor in it and it doesn't care. The reason why you'd want to drive with it down uh, is because the topper would be off and you want that piece of glass to be down. Uh, trying to drive around with the topper on and all the windows open and this glass down just brings in diesel exhaust on the inside and it's not very pleasant. Uh, sorry about that. I have an issue. Anyway, uh, like I said, the window being down with the top on isn't very pleasant and it just pours in diesel exhaust. So I wouldn't advise that. Uh, the rear seats do fold down. So if you want to do that, you have to come in here and you have to remove the headrests. And unlike some of the other Toyotas that have seats where you have to remove the headrests, there's no place to put them. So you just kind of have to toss them somewhere. Um, and there's these little tabs in the seats here to pull forward. Once you do that, pull the little tabs, and then they slide, not slide, but fold forward. And then you put the seats back. And now you get quite a bit of space back here. Um, if you really wanted to, you could probably sleep in here. Camp, probably, without any sort of issue. And, uh, yeah, I mean... It's completely practical for an everyday like sort of vehicle, and of course you get the exclusivity of driving around a beautiful early 80s, or mid 80s I guess, diesel Toyota. Uh, other things that point to this being driven by 
one person or one family, I guess, for a long time, um, is it has the original bottle jack and the original like tools and things for that. Uh, the tools are on the other side. But to find them like this in such good shape isn't common. And likewise, to have the original toolkit, and then uh, I'll go into it. It's like every time you get these sort of tools, they're not like super ultra high quality tools, but it's more in how cool it is to have Toyota branded, made in Japan, uh, what do they call it? An angle wrench. Same thing with like, you know, just the little screwdrivers and stuff. It's just a nice completion thing. There we go. And likewise, these say Toyota on them too. You get a 12, a 10, and then a 14 and 17 millimeter wrench set. Official Toyota pliers. And then, uh, uh, how does this work? This is a tire iron, essentially, for your lugs. It does say Toyota. Put this in there. And then the rest of the jack operating things, because you have to twist it because it's a bottle jack. And then you get two wheel chucks. Say Toyota Motor. It doesn't look like they've ever been used. So that's neat. I don't know what this says. Probably don't try to drive on them or something along those lines. But yeah, to uh, have everything as it is indicates that it was well loved by somebody. And then when you start getting into smaller things like toolkits, uh, they just usually don't survive. Unless it's been in one person's care the whole time. Like I said, I don't. I can't say for certain, but it certainly feels like if there was a second owner, they didn't have it for very long. Uh, some other weirdness too, when we got this, and I'll show you it actually. As soon as I raise the window. Uh, other weirdness about this truck when we first got it. <laughs> Put the headrest back later. Uh, so right here is oil change stickers and they're pretty thick. There's, I don't know, like 15, 16 of them. Uh, all identical. So every time you should, they would come in for oil change, I'd put this. This is the uh, manual transmission fluid. So it says AT, but they cross that out because it's a manual. Um, so you'll notice that this says December 7th, 2017, uh, Japan does a lot of their automotive stuff like this based on the emperor's reign. Um, there's a specific name for it and all that sort of stuff. But 2018 is 30. So this is 2017. So just before I got it, it had its oil change at 228,182,000 kilometers. If we look, this currently has 2,208. 229,070 kilometers. When I got it, it had gone 15 miles past when the oil was changed. Or 15 kilometers, I should say, so not even miles. Um, so, yeah, oh, and uh, another sort of neat thing. This is the fuel door. I've managed to translate this one, and it's basically a fuel detergent. So like, I'm guessing whenever they would bring this in to have um, service done, they would apply a sticker every time they would do a fuel system cleansing thing. So that's what all of these are. And if you look, you can see the same sort of like tags. So it goes far, far back. Uh, except this, this is a, I think Shinto traffic school safety charm thing, which that's neat all on its own. But yeah, so, Stuff like this, to me, indicates that somebody had it for a long time and they maintained it. Um, pop the hood, so I show you this mean fire breather of an engine. 
apologies that the sun makes it difficult to see. Um, so yeah, it's again been lovingly maintained in here. Um, no leaks, no cracks, no rust, nothing. Um, this rubber hose has cracked, and so they just wrapped it with tape, but it's simply an intake from the air cleaner, or air intake from the cleaner to the actual intake itself. Um, here's your tiny, tiny little turbo. Your uh, giant diesel fuel filter, power steering pump inlet, radiator, overflow coolant tank, windshield washer fluid, fuse box, um, various relays, power system brake booster, newer battery, yeah, it's all it's all in good shape here. Um, oh, and then right here, this is my favorite little detail. Apologies if that sun is bright. But right here is the tag. So Toyota Motor Company. And the frame number is LN61-00009070. So, like I said, I'm not an expert, but to me that seems like this is the 907th one that rolled off of the Toyota Hilux Surf production line. All right, uh, so that's pretty much it for the walk around. Um, so yeah, it's it's real damn pretty uh, or handsome if you don't want to feminize it. Uh, so yeah, now we'll go take it for a drive. All right, let's take this for a drive. Um, I'm gonna start it first. Do the walk around. <sighs> around here, this noise indicates a much bigger truck than what it actually is. trucks are a whole new thing now and cars and stuff too of course but the new classics are the things that I grew up with I guess early Millennials which is this stuff
gets pretty good fuel mileage too. Uh, this is the sort of driving that I'll do with it. And I get about 22 miles to the gallon. Like doing the actual math, not using like any sort of computer system or whatever. say earlier I mentioned that it'll do 75 it's about the top speed but it doesn't really feel strained it's just there's nothing else left on top of the rev range when you're going that because it usually goes about 3500 rpm if you're doing about 75 on the highway in fifth gear of course Too nice. Transmissions. Clean too, all right. Sorry, uh, AMX. Don't see many AMCs, so I get excited about that. My first car was a 74 AMC Hornet. Anyway, uh, the throws are fairly long, but you get a nice angle on the stick, so it's not too big of a deal. 
transmission is smooth. It's not nearly as notchy as like our Land Cruiser. It's, it's car-like. Everything about this points towards just being a tall car as opposed to being a truck, at least from my point of view. It's very comfortable. It's very smooth, especially at speed and uh, in modern traffic anyway. It's actually pretty small. on it after the last oil change that's very different than normally what I get because like I get stuff and usually the reason why is because it needs some sort of major maintenance and rather than actually go through with it they go off and sell the car things like timing belts or suspensions or brake jobs or something like that so to get something from auction maintained up until I got it that makes me wonder what happened to the previous owner. It's pretty warm here today in Sarasota, but it's probably <clears throat> 90, 92. Handles it like a champ. get a little turbo light down there that's what that green light is Upgrades, no problem. As this is our biggest hill. Everything that makes this truck special is kind of its exclusivity and the condition it's in. But as far as driving, it's a truck. Right smack in the middle of the 80s Toyota truck. When they were just starting to peak, or maybe they did peak, I don't know. Absolutely rock solid, reliable, beautifully maintained, comfortable. You don't give up any sort of, well, air conditioning is pretty much the biggest thing that I couldn't give up. A ton of space, four seats, five speed manual, four wheel drive. There's a, you might be hearing it, but there's like a, like an actuator or something within the AC system or the HVAC system, I guess, that makes a little Not exactly sure what that is. For somebody out there knows.
nice. And whoever has this after me, I'm hoping they keep it stock. There's a lot of people out there with their Toyotas that are altered. So much so that to find one that isn't modified, that doesn't have big giant tires on it, that isn't lifted, that's the rare one. Especially because it was maintained for so long. like the Land Cruiser that I was driving before this, um, I've received absolutely no negative attention from it at all. All positive. Everybody loves this. Even big domestic giant truck driver type people. It transcends a lot of stuff. It's too, it's too cool. it works just fine um, it would work a lot better if these windows were tinted but I'll leave that up to the next owner because who knows where this will end up Beep. If you want a uh, first generation Hilux Surf, you don't get many choices.
wasn't clear, it has power steering. In fact, I believe it has every option according to the promotional material I was talking about way earlier. Um, this has every option with the exception of the front winch and the sunroof, if, if that's an option. The yellow one in the brochure had it, but not this one. But it's got the center rear console heater, air conditioning, and the like um, side steps. Those are pretty major, and I believe this was an option as well. Or it might have been standard on all of them, I'm not sure. And uh, using the fender mounted, front fender mounted rear view mirrors, it's totally fine to get used to it really easily. But the thing about that, at least I find, is that I'm used to them being right here. And then so my brain assumes that the rear of whatever vehicle I'm driving goes so far back. But since these mirrors are so far forward, you have to compensate, at least I do, and I have to add like another four feet minimum onto that because the mirror isn't where I think it is because I think it's right here. But since it's up further, you know, like I have to take into account that my ass is still hanging out further than I think. traffic all day. But it was all over the window, so I had to take zero, zero, zero grade, quad four, quad zero grade, I guess, steel wool to the windows, and it took a lot of effort. But they're clear now. But you just, with water, just go over the surface of the window until you scrape up all the stuff. I tried vinegar and things, but none of that worked because it had been on there for so long, I assume. As maintaining something like this um, here in the US because we never got a 2.4 liter turbo diesel from Toyota like this um, it's it's not hard there's enough vehicles that have this engine that getting consumables like oil filters and stuff are relatively easy otherwise it shares everything with first-gen 4Runners it's the same so like can brake hardware and stuff like that isn't it isn't an issue at all trim pieces and stuff probably be difficult but there's enough of a following now of 80s Toyota trucks and things that you can find a specialist out there somewhere
this engine without the turbo would be glacial. Because it isn't fast. Fast enough. But the turbo makes it usable. Because I'm so vain, I like to catch reflections in store windows because the truck looks so good. section right here.
the tool bag in the rear fender because it's loose so it'll just rise up and drop back down. Did go over that speed bump a little too fast. about dead so uh, if the camera dies beforehand well about done anyway but this is a really nice truck and if you have one or if you can find one it's perfectly capable of living or you're per perfectly capable of living with it in the United States and get up a ton of tension when you do it too
it's a 1985 Toyota Hilux Surf.